All right, Jan. First of all, I want to thank you for being willing to be in front of a camera and sharing this, uh, not only to patients, but also to doctors. I think this is too good to be kept a secret and too good to be uh, hoarded. So this is why I, I would like to ask you to be natural. It doesn't have to be scripted. It doesn't have to be anything but your story. And your story, among others, will hopefully make a difference and make doctors realize uh, it's something they need to at least give a shot to. And, and for patients to hear that there's, uh, there's more than just taking a tooth out and putting uh, a piece of metal instead. So from here, it's all yours, Jan. You take it however you want and um, go on. I am so happy for Dr. Wynn. I'm not kidding you. I cannot say how happy I am. I had a surgery yesterday. I I don't feel like a million bucks, but I feel like a half million. And I never expected I would. I am so thankful that Dr. Wim listened to me. And he was my lucky number seven consultation. And now I, I am really confident with his procedure. Everything he said was true. It wasn't a disappointment. It was, it was a success. And I feel so fortunate that I got to have this experience and who would ever want that? Who would ever want, what do you call it, apio that, That's right. So uh, just, just to make, make, uh, make it uh, clear, it's an apicoectomy or apico surgery, and and you had one like that years ago, right? I'm, I'm like, uh, yes, over thirty years ago, um, I had it, and it was unbelievable. I missed over a week of work. I it was due to a dentist um, making a mistake and um, going through to my sinus, and it was a nightmare. I had a really high fever. I had to do emergency surgery. It was, it was horrible healing time. You wouldn't even recognize my face. It, it was huge. It was huge from all of the trauma that happened. Um, it was a nightmare and I was fearful of this procedure that I had done yesterday that I, I will never fear like again. I, I can't believe that I'm actually even saying that because there's no way that I could, I can probably tell somebody who hasn't been through it, but it's like having a baby. That's, you can have the worst <laughs> horror stories and then you can have a comeback of how this is just the best. It really was. It, I, I, I just think Dr. Wynn is a miracle man. <laughs> Lucky number seven. <laughs> Lucky number seven. I remember we talked about this when we first met. And uh, let, let's talk about the seven before we go into the actual procedure and, and, and you know, how, how that you're here less than a, a day later and, and not having too much pain and so forth. But let's talk about the seven, me being the seventh doctor. Uh, I, I think you wanted to share about that. And I think doctors need to hear this. And, well, that's right. You were my seventh um, consultation, and when I was at my sixth one, um, he, I, I told him that he was my last hope. Um, I researched on the internet and really, you know, got inundated with information. And anyway, I, the reason why I ended up coming to see the dentist before Dr. Wynn was because I found out that he purchased a laser and that he had a protocol that he did this treatment in order to um, have promote better healing and to have um, the bacteria removal, have it be the area be as cleaned and as, as bacteria gone as possible. And so when I went and went to the other dentist, he he explained that he had that protocol, but my situation was different because I'd already had some trauma and yada yada. But um, I ended up being at Dr. Wynn's and 
Number one, he listened. He actually did not dismiss my feelings um, of pain. And he, he's a miracle man. <laughs> and it's because he believes in thinking outside the box. He's a forward thinker and he is innovative and he's open to um, trying, he must have done that to try the laser kind of ahead of the game, but he's gonna be ahead because he is having success with people like me. And then by the way, the, the tooth you came in for isn't the tooth we did surgery on. That was tooth number one. That's the one that had the mad nerve. And I think everyone before was looking at the, at the small picture at the teeth that had treatment and forgot that this wisdom tooth was the one that was hurting you. And, and so um, I, I think this, this also doctors need to hear this is that they need to really uh, have a comprehensive approach well, to dentistry, not just be small picture. And one big thing you did that no other one did was the rubber dam <laughs> to put that on the tooth that, you know, to try it out. So yeah, it took more time. You know, he, you knew it wasn't tooth two or three. Those were treated with a root canal. You knew that tooth three had to be it, but to get me to be able to have that pain, um, reproduce it, then you put the rubber dam on, and That's then right. I did it. It's That's like, right. I don't know. It's like, okay, it's not rocket science to think of that, but <laughs> it seemed like it was because no one else was doing it. May, may I chime in here? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, this is for the doctors I've taught before. And by the way, Dr. Smith, who referred you here, is one of them. And I call them the commandos with an E, like the, the root commandos, you know. Um, so let me just chime in quickly for them. Commandos, you remember what we, we, we did at the course is the rubber dam water test. And that's what I, I, uh, I use here for Jan. And apparently it clearly helped her. Uh, not being in pain now because we found the tooth that ha had trouble and we treated it first before we treated the, the tooth here with, yeah. with surgery. So two different teeth. But if you don't locate the right tooth, doctors, um, your patient is not going to be helped. And, and, uh, and you know, it's a lose-lose. And the situation too. Okay, so could anyone, your, your commando people out there, <laughs> could they be open to, you don't have just one problem, you have two. That's right. It's a possibility. I mean, I couldn't get anybody to even be open to that. And unfortunately, that's what my situation was. It was that I had two. Ever since I had this, how do you call it, APOectomy? APOectomy. Okay, um, years and years ago, I swear, I swear the tooth was not right. Mm -hmm. You know, but of course it's not going to be the same as if a treatment maybe hadn't been done, but I definitely haven't been without. So I don't know. It's not the standard that people feel bone pain or infection or whatever, but there was something that was awry. Mm -hmm. It wasn't right. It's so, I don't know, whatever that's worth too. I don't think it's in my imagination because I'd much rather do something else than imagine pain. Well, I'm just glad to see you smile, you know, 16 hours later. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's all. And, uh, oh, now, now let's, let's talk about the timeline, right? So you had an apicorectomy where we, we made incision through your gums, your, your bone and your roots. And could you give us the timeline from when you had it done to now, what you've taken as pain medication, your pain level? I, this is for patients, not for doctors anymore. This is for patients who are very scared. They hear surgery and they just, say, take my tooth out. Mm -hmm. I want to stop that, that mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, uh, please, please tell the patients uh, what your experience was. Well, it, it was, I got in the car at four o'clock and I took two ibuprofens. What are those, 200 milligrams? And so um, it wasn't quite enough. I noticed around seven, um, I had a long drive home and I noticed around seven that I needed a little more. So I took another ibuprofen and a acetaminophen. And um, then it was under control. I was basically thinking, I'm better. So from 4 to 9.30, I kind of timed it. I was definitely comfortable. Let's put it this way. I was more comfortable yesterday, four and a half hours after, or whatever that is, five and a half hours after the surgery, 
than I was with the root canal tooth that I've been walking around with for several months now, that pain. I, I was more comfortable than that. So it was, for someone who's scared, who's been through a lot of trauma with their teeth, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to say it was nothing, but it was not what I thought it was going to be. Uh -huh. I was prepared for the worst. So if 10 out of 10 was the worst pain in your mind, where were you at the worst yesterday uh, or the, the whole time up to now? I would say my worst pain that I felt yesterday was at the most four. four. And it was for very little time. I see. Okay. So. And then you slept through the night? Yep. You you weren't woken up by the pain or anything I like that? I was not woke okay. up by the pain. Okay. And I think ice is our best friend. So I am one of those people. I right. faithfully put it on, took it off. Um, so definitely, I mean, all the things taking place. But I, I, I would not think I'd be like, you know, doing this little recording right now. Because <laughs> I, I would think I would need to be recovering. But I... Instead, can go on with my life. Yeah, yeah. Very and happy. and by the way, it's this is not magic. This is not a miracle. This is just science. I think doctors are just not yeah. willing to listen. And this is why I think having your input will will help. You know. And I think people too, both patients, like but patients, like from my side, they think, well, this procedure is expensive. Oh, and this and that, but. I don't know. I, I kind of teamed it up with how much a car repair bill is sometimes or <laughs> all these things. And you use your teeth every day. Oh, to, amen to that. You know, so I know that that's intimidating. The money is intimidating. But if it's at all possible, I I think that it's worth it. And you're worth it as a person. And and then, like, for the commandos out there. That <laughs> I like I, that. I can't. I can't, I don't want to buy a laser. I always, you know, and I don't want to go out there and learn it. I'm, it's going to cost money, but I think in the end, in the end, it, it'll really be a plus versus a minus. And you'll be ahead of the game. You'll have your own niche. I mean, you know, as far as profit goes or whatever, I would think that that would be a, a plus. People must think I'm paying you to do this. No, Seriously. And, yes. and I know you're not, but, but we have a business and we know that it takes the right tools uh -huh. and education and experience to make money. Right. And that's, it's just what it is. It's, but before everything else, let's, let's be clear to to whoever will be listening to this. It's it's about serving the patient, right? It's about the patient first. And again, that's something we doctors are quickly forgetting or, or were never taught in the first place, well, unfortunately. It's, yeah, it's hard because I don't think everybody's in the chair. They don't have that procedure done, but I think that's something that should be taught. I think they teach that in Europe that kind of like not really bedside manner, but you know, they make the doctors go through like an ailment, what it's like to go through, you know, laying in a bed and having everybody wake you up so often uh -huh. to do tests and stuff like that. I think it's important to realize that we're all human and it could be you next time. And how would you feel if you were just dismissed for your pain or... Oh, I, I wasn't going to say that. If, how would you feel if you were going from doctor to doctor and they think you're crazy, right? And <laughs> Well, yeah. And, and you know, you here I am. I'm each consultation. I'm having to be disappointed That's that right. I can't go forward. I was excited to get this appointment and have the surgery done because I'm moving forward. And that, well, that meant a lot to me. So I'm... I couldn't be happier and feel like it was more successful and relieved than I am really right now. Jan, thank you so much. For, I mean, I, I know it's taking your time and time is, cannot be replaced or even purchased. That's but valuable. thank you for sharing your experience. I think hopefully uh, we're going to make a change um, little by little. But I, I believe this, yeah. this will help patients, this will help doctors, and this will help us as a community uh, overall, you know. And, uh, well, it certainly can't hurt. I mean, you know, I mean, and like I said, one, or he said, one you know, seed gets planted 
and give it the things that it needs to grow and 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 keep with what you believe mm -hmm. you know if you don't believe in this don't do it That's because right. your heart won't be in it but I don't know if you open your mind there's a lot of things out there to see that's right yeah well go team give me a high five right hey, here <laughs> yeah. thank you very much